Hello and welcome. My name is Olga. I'm a relationships coach and advanced fast GFT practitioner. And in this video, we're talking about something that I get a lot of questions on. And this is a wonderful practice that I recommend to all my clients who are ready to build healthy sun foundation and actually start dating uh, so they can find a, a good for them partner, their soulmate. So if this is on your bucket list for 2020, tune in because I'm about to share something that might potentially change your dating experience and change your relationship with yourself, which is a foundation to attracting healthier and happier relationships in your life. So why do I recommend dating yourself? What is dating yourself? And why do I recommend doing it weekly? Now, you probably heard many times that you only can love others to extend that you love yourself, right? And you always heard that you wanna learn how to love yourself first before you allow love in your life. Well, the same thing is true with dating. It's really hard to just get out there and go on a date without having an understanding and an experience of what does it feel like in your body to actually have that relationship with yourself first. And so what I wanna inspire you to do as a result of this video is to take yourself on a date. And I'll give you some examples of what does it look like and how I date myself still even after being married for more than two years because it's a wonderful, wonderful experience to connect with yourself, to get to know yourself better, to feel safe and to explore your surroundings. So let's begin. So reason number one why I recommend my clients to date themselves is because this is a perfect opportunity for you to get to know yourself better. And I remember when I was starting doing this before even opening my dating profile or barely when I did, it was such a great experience because it was very, very clear for me what I like and what I don't like. And that gave me a really good opportunity to explore what I will like and what I will not like in relationship. For example, I really like going to bookstores. Like you can often see me sitting in Panera Bread or Barnes and Nobles with a book, sinking my teeth in a new <laughs> book of the sort of professional development or personal development, having a cup of latte or coloring. I really like coloring. And so another thing that I really like is just taking myself on a long walk, whether it's by the ocean or in nature, I really enjoy that. I could do some shopping, whether it's window shopping or, or something like that. So I, I knew that those are the kind of experiences I really enjoyed and they connected me with me more and they allow me to really enjoy my own company. It's like me and me had a great time together. And you know, of course, if you cannot enjoy your own company, there's part of you that always will <clears throat> wonder if other people will enjoy your company, right? So it's a perfect opportunity to explore that and see if there are some things that you need to tap on, right? It'll always give you good opportunities or things to clear on when you put yourself with yourself in one room and you clear the distractions. Reason number two is to actually explore your surroundings, explore the city, and just go have fun. A lot of my clients explore some new hobbies as a result of that. They realize that they wanted to go dancing for a while and then they never done that. Or there's this thrift store that they wanted to play and, and see what, what's out there. Uh, and it's, it's a really good opportunity to discover more of who you are. So often I'll, I'll tell women in my communities, I really don't think you need to change who you are. I think you need to become more of who you are already and dating yourself is a perfect opportunity to explore that. Now, another fun fact that I wanted to share with you regarding dating yourself is that sometimes you can actually meet others. And this happened with me and it's a little embarrassing. I need to start wearing my wedding ring. But I took myself on a date, um, you know, a few months ago to Starbucks and I felt just so happy and I felt just very juicy. I wasn't dressed up for a date, right? I just took my bike there and I went there for a cup of tea. I had my morning pages journal and I was just, just chatting with the, with the um, uh, person who was, you know, selling coffee at the, uh, at the counter. And next thing I see a guy is looking at me, he's like staring at me. I'm sitting down, I'm starting my morning pages and he comes up to me and he taps me on the shoulder, he says, excuse me, can I have your phone number? I was like, a what? <laughs> you know, um, my hair wasn't done, my makeup wasn't done. I was in this just, you know, yoga pants or whatever. And he was hitting on me. I just didn't get it. 
But this is a perfect example of how love can literally come to you when you are ready and when you are open. I always say universe will bend backward to deliver things that you want when you take that step forward, right? Now, the rest of the story, at that time, I already was married, so obviously I did not want to go on a date with the guy, so I was trying to be as you know gracious and as kind and saying no, thank you, but no. And he said, you know what, it's so interesting because you had this yoga pants and you had glasses on and your shirt had some birds on. So in his mind, all those things that I would write off, oh my gosh, this is so not attractive for a man, that's what he was looking for. He was like, it's a sign from the universe. And I was like, yeah, if I wouldn't be in relationships, you know, we, we could totally go on a date. But obviously I'm married, so that's not an option. But it was interesting to hear his side of the story and how, how we sometimes assign things to ourselves that are, you know, not sexy or not attractive, and they totally are. What I think is sexy and attractive is your essence, right? Is your personality, is this juiciness, this juiciness and your character that's what attracts a good conscious man. So the reason number three that I, I would love for you to go on a date with yourself is to practice feeling safe, safe and comfortable in a social settings where people are, right, versus spending your free evenings with the Netflix. And of course, you know, if you're starting to experience social anxiety or like, oh my gosh, everybody's going to stare at me and I'm going to sit by myself at the table or I'm going to take myself in a movie and be all by myself. Perfect, tap on it. This is such a juicy information that you're bringing up for you to clear. One of the mantras that I remember practicing when I started dating is, I live in a safe and protective universe. I live in a safe and supportive universe. Because every single person who is in your life right now was a stranger at some point, right? Unless they are you know, your immediate family. But your best friends, your virtual assistants, your co-workers, your spouses, everybody, most of the people, they were strangers, right? And if you're not feeling safe to go and explore the world and meet new people, it's really hard to meet your soulmate or to find a good for you person. Now, what I'm starting to realize now, as I've been working with women on this for years, is that there are a lot of women who genuinely believe that they can meet a partner without ever dating. And it's possible. The truth is, Ernie, my husband, I was the very first date he ever went on and he married me. He married his first date. So there are many, many possibilities. But in most of the cases, you want to learn how to feel safe. You want to learn how to go and meet different people. And you want to be okay with that. It's a really good experience. Reason number four that I want you to practice dating is to practice what I call your receiving muscle, right? To flex this ability to receive good things and to give to yourself when you are exploring, you know, the dating arena. I was talking to a, a client and she said, Olga, receiving is really hard for me. I had to consciously practice it. And even when she started dating this amazing man, his name is Jason. And so she said, um, he gave me candies and he brought me flowers and I was freaking out. I was like, great, tap on it. <laughs> right? So put yourself in a situation where you feel the way how you want to feel in luxurious in, in relationships. What are those feelings? find them and be true to them. Very often they are the same way how you want to feel across many parts of your life. So some of those feelings for me are, I like to feel luxurious and luxurious doesn't necessarily mean expensive. It kind of means give myself a space and time and liberty, right? The second way how I like to feel is at ease. I don't like struggle, I don't like drama. <laughs> I like things to be easy and light. Another way how I like to feel is inspiring and inspired. And very often when I go on a date with myself, you'll see me hearing, listening to some tapping videos or to Tash Corbett or to Denise Deffel Thomas, because those people inspire me. So start looking for the ways how you want to feel in relationships and practice receiving it. Can you take yourself to a nice dinner and you and you just have a glass of champagne and have something small? And here's the truth, guys. It really is not um, a money thing, right? So you're thinking, okay, well, maybe you can take yourself on a luxury retreat, but I don't have money to do that. 
it's really not a money thing. When I did have an opportunity to, you know, go and stay in a four star hotel for a night, what I did is I went to a lobby of that hotel. True story, I did it multiple times. I drove to Galveston City and there's this nice San Luis hotel and they have like a little coffee shop and a restaurant. And all I did, I bought myself a cup of coffee and a little like, you know, pie thingy, whatever, cupcake. And it was so great. I was just sitting there in the lobby and I was like, I totally fit in. <laughs> you know? I'm ready for this abundant, luxurious lifestyle. And there was a great opportunity for me to practice myself, to practice receiving, to practice dating myself, to practice receiving, and to, you know, flex this abundance muscle. Reason number five I want you to date yourself is because I want you to practice feeling romantic. Many women that I work with, they are ambitious, they have kids, they have houses, they have parents, they have things to run. So we get very, very domesticated and busy and we do, 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 and barely ever we relax and feel like a woman and feel just flirty and happy and feminine. And so when you put time in your calendar to go and date yourself, that's your opportunity to feel all those things, right? To tap into a feminine energy, which is such a beautiful, juicy energy. And that's the number one thing why men are attracted to women, right? A deep, conscious woman. What attracts this kind of woman to a great man is not necessarily her look or the earrings, even though I like those kind of things and I'm often girly, or like how skinny you are, and God knows I'm not skinny, but it's your true essence. It's that life force. And men, they actually don't have it. That's why they're looking for this as a compliment. You know, the deep conscious men, they are very, very focused, right? Like if you see Ernie work, oh my gosh, I can dance naked around him, he will not notice me. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> okay, maybe not that. But he gets into the tasks and he's very focused and analytical and logical. And that's a masculine energy. So how do you wake up a man? How do you attract a man? How do you become visible to a man? You are being in your feminine is one of the best ways to attract deep, conscious, great men. And so practice feeling romantic could be something very small. And romantic is different for different people, right? So for some people, romantic is going to a park and maybe having like, you know, a lunch there in a the park, right? So for me, it's actually more that has a bit of a fancy things to it. I like to dress up. I like put earrings on. I like wearing my heels. Exercising actually makes me feel more feminine and that me feels, makes me feel more romantic. So just remember strong, healthy, masculine energy is attracted to a feminine one. So it's a really good one to practice. And for the most part, um, you know, different women have different energies. And of course we both, we all have some feminine and some masculine, right? But most of the women that I work with at the core, they are feminine. They just not, never really connect to themselves that way. And they never really practice that, that way of being. But I've been living in a feminine for many years in my first marriage and it's an, I mean, in a masculine and it's not a fun way to do it, right? Because I felt like I had to make all decisions. I felt like when I made a decision, I was blamed for it because I wasn't with a man who was a leader and who could take responsibility and lead me through life. And that's because I never really practiced feeling romantic, flirty and feminine. And I didn't have an opportunity because I had to just run live all the time, right? And so start noticing some of those dynamics within yourself and how you can open up and have fun with this dating yourself thing because I can guarantee you guys you're gonna enjoy it. Now, if you're starting to get panicky or even like, oh my gosh, dating myself, are you kidding me, Olga? Tap on it. I just had a, an entire session with a client just so we can tap out any fears or worries or anything else that's coming up for her going to Barnes and Nobles and sitting there reading her book, right? So you can do this yourself. It's really, really great exercise. Tap on it. And if you need any help in clearing any of those feelings or worries or doubts or maybe resistance to starting your dating journey, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help. Well, thank you so much for watching. It's been so much fun. I am running to catch a uh, lunch with a friend of mine, Jamie from Colorado is actually here. So I'm very, very excited, but thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next Facebook live. Big hug.